We resume our study of the Narada Bhakti Sutras. Dvitiyo Dhyayaha Para Bhakti Mahatvam. So now I think we are all convinced of the importance of Para Bhakti, but let's listen to what Narada says about this. Um, the 25th Sutra says, Satu Karma Jnana Yoge Bhyopi Adhikatara. Para Bhakti. The supreme divine love described is something more than karma, jnana and yoga. Obviously. Huh? Why also he describes? Falarupatvat. Because it is the of the nature of the fruit, nature of the result of the practice. Hmm? See, this is the beauty of bhakti. It is, it is uh, the very nature of the result. The, the path also is beautiful. The way, also, the way is beautiful, uh, I mean the goal is beautiful, the way to the goal also is beautiful and it is of the nature of the result which means the means you adopt also are beautiful and in the same way satisfying. So for it is of the nature of the fruit or result even before you get it, the very practice is beautiful. Then he says, Ishwarasya api abhimana dveshitvat Dainya Priyatvacha. Well, the meaning of this is, and also because God dislikes the reliance on one's own unaided self effort and likes the complete feeling of misery due to the consciousness of one's helplessness in independently working out one's salvation. That is why bhakti is greater. Another reason is see, a person who asserts that he can achieve anything. Or a person who takes refuge in the Lord, surrenders to the Lord for the attainment of his aim of Parabhakti. The Lord always prefers one who takes refuge in him. Because you see, the very nature of Ishwara is, he is the God of love. He is the one who is the refuge of all beings. So when one takes refuge in him, he will definitely help that person. And that is why Bhakti is greater, he says. So, just relying on one's egoistic uh, capacities to uh, attain, that is not preferred. The, the path preferred is the path of bhakti, where one acknowledges the existence of Ishwara, surrenders to him, takes refuge in him and moves towards the higher stages of bhakti. Then he says, Tasya jnana meva sadhana mityeke. In the view of some, knowledge alone is the means to attain it. See? There are acharyas who think like this, that knowledge is the means to supreme love. Anyonya ashrayatvam iti anye. Others think that these various means or faculties are interdependent. All of them are required hmm, in order to gain uh, parabhakti. Swayam falarupa teti brahma kumaraha. Uh, swayam falarupata, which means the fact of a thing, thing being its own fruit. Uh, Narada says that spiritual realization is its own fruit. See, you may be doing karma or uh, jnana or uh, yoga to attain something. But when you do bhakti, it, you experience the nature of the Lord then and there. So that is why it is called phala rupatvat. And it is swayam phala rupata. It is of the nature of the fruit you are seeking. That is the beauty of bhakti. That is why it is considered Shreshta, the supreme path. Raja Griha Bhojanadishu Tathaiva Drishtatvat, which means, for it is seen only thus in the case of the king, home, and dinner. Uh, well, the meaning of this is in, in the case of these three, uh, the king, and uh, home, and dinner, the, the experience of it is the satisfaction of it then and there. So it is something like that. Huh? He is trying to draw some parallels in everyday life. Na tena raja paritoshaha kshut shant shantirva. Not as a result of that does the king become king, nor the wayfarer derive satisfaction, nor the hungry man feel appeased. So you see, it comes from within them. Their feeling of satisfaction and appeasement comes from within them. So, bhakti is like that. It is such a transforming inner experience that it yields uh, the greatest fruits of life. So, it cannot be used to get something 
material into one's life it is itself its fruit tasmat saiva grahya mumukshubihi and that is therefore that highest spiritual realization alone is worthy of being accepted as the goal by people who are desirous of permanent release from all bondage that is why that is the aim of life the goal of life so here you see clearly outlined the nature of para bhakti the characteristics and its mahatmya why it is the supreme goal in the next chapter tritiya adhyaya we have bhakti sadhanani the means to the attainment of this bhakti what is the sadhan uh, sadhan itself means that which will get the sadhya vastu that which gets the goal uh, so what is the means adopted so now he will be outlining all the means which is very important for us as sadhaks tasya sadhanani gayanti acharya who has given these sadhan uh, these means the great acharyas of bhakti the great teachers of bhakti so teachers describe in hymns and songs the following as the means of spiritual realization tattu vishaya tyagat sangha tyagat cha the supreme state of divine love and immortality is made possible only by giving up vishaya tyag which means giving up the objective uh, reality of the world and the senses and sangha tyagacha and the consequent renunciation of attachment towards the objects of the senses so this is what is meant uh, see to our egocentric intellect and senses the objective world appears real ah when the mind is chanchal the objective world is real but when the mind has attained quietitude tranquility naturally you see the higher aspects of spiritual life open up devotion to god opens up so this is what he is saying and it result it will result in spontaneous relinquishment of all attachment so this is the nature of the sadhan required for divine love then he says avyavrutattu bhajanat by avyavrutta bhajanat which means by uninterrupted loving service to the divine so this is always insisted especially in the vaishnava tradition that love is what love does love is service so serving the lord in various ways and many beautiful aspects of devotional worship can be outlined here so serving the lord as a human being in front of you pleasing him taking refuge in him surrendering to him bowing down before him offering him the best in your life these are all means to please him and to attain him so by this kind of uninterrupted loving service to the deity who is god manifested in the image uh, god in manifestation by rendering this service one gets divinized continuously only those who have performed pu- puja in life will understand its significance how it transforms our inner life so this is being said then he says loke api bhagavad guna shravana kirtanat by hearing and singing the glory of the lord even while engaged in the ordinary activities of life so you see this is a very beautiful instruction given in our practical life although we are engaged in all activities of life don't think they are impediments to the higher devotional life in the midst of that if you can hear and sing the glory of the lord and engage with the divine in your everyday life then uh, it will it will be divinizing the whole of your life so you see the path of bhakti is smooth and soft it is not about renouncing and running away anywhere it is about transforming our attitude to the things in our life and thus divinizing our life so it's the easy path it's the natural path for the bhakta then he says mukhya tastu mahat kripayaiva bhagavat kripa leshadva primarily it is got only through the grace of great souls or through a slight measure of divine grace see even a slight measure of divine grace will bring para bhakti or the grace of great souls so this is very important it is always uh, insisted upon in the vaishnava tradition the sangha is very important the association we keep and especially association with highly illumined souls illumined masters will ensure that our own mind reaches that level so there are so many stories you see those who came close to shri ramakrishna 
God divina is just by the intensity of his bhav. Those who came close to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually went in experienced ecstasy. Those who sat in front of Raman Maharshi got the knowledge of their own consciousness just by gazing into his eyes which were always you know riveted to, towards the absolute so this is possible in the presence of illumined masters they have this tremendous capacity to transform our mind instantly so this is being described here mukhya tastu this is one of the chief means to attain bhakti it is said uh, mahat sang great holy company further he enumerates mahat sangastu durlabho agamyo amoghascha the nature of this uh, great company holy companies it is durlab it is difficult to obtain but agamyo agamya means subtle and incomprehensible how it affects you and impacts your inner life it is incomprehensible but amoghascha it is infallible unerringly effective direct way to attain to the divine so this is the value of mahat sang if you can find holy company be sure that that is the greatest blessing of life and if we cannot find it make every effort to find it this is the way because you see this path uh, outlined by the sages it is difficult but if you have holy company it becomes easy so this is what is being said labhyate api tat kripayaiva and it is attainable only by the grace of god Hmm? it is only through the grace of god that one even gets holy company by which one is able to augment one's bhakti sadhana tasmin um, <laughs> tasmin tat jane bheda abhavat because in god and in his devotees there is no sense of difference <coughs> between any two objects of the universe the nature of love is unifying it brings everything together and so that is the nature of all saints and the supreme lord himself so in his eyes there are no differences tadeva sadhyata tadeva sadhyatam and that is why such practices as would enable us to take advantage of their grace alone are to be adopted hmm? whatever comes from the uh, mouth of holy people it it will bring us bring only good to us and that is why those practices recommended by them are to be adopted and then he wants dussanga sarvathaiva tyajaha evil company must be shunned by all means because that will pull the mind down how that is enumerated in the next one he says kama krodha moha smriti bhramsha buddhi nasha sarvanasha karanatvat because unholy company bad company will lead to the rousing up of desire anger delusion loss of memory and hence loss of discrimination and finally to utter ruin in the end so you can see this clearly uh, if we are careless about the company we keep we will pay for it so so important is divine company it will generate the necessary vibration in the mind and give it the the chance the uh, the ability to transform itself spontaneously tarangaita api me sangat samudrayante which means though they rise only in the form of ripples in the beginning they become like a veritable sea as a as a result of evil company the result of uh, evil association is this that the desires will get uh, augmented and uh, it will become like an ocean of confusion within oneself although it may arise only as a ripple as a vritti finally it consumes the um, the person and leads him the wrong way you know a, a whole decade of one's life can be wasted if one gets into the wrong kind of company so again and again this is being warned kastarati kastarati mayam ya sangam tyajati yo mahanu bhavam sevate and nirmamo bhavati who crosses this world of maya he who avoids all contact with objects of senses as are likely as they are likely to inflame passions and resorts to spiritually great souls serves them and gets rid of all possessions in the service of the needy 
so you see sangham tejate he gets rid of bad company mahanubhavam sevate he goes into the service of holy people and nirmamo bhavati he removes his uh, ahankar the ego naturally and such a person overcomes the delusive effect of maya so you see the sadhana is completely outlined here and very clearly what is required to be done to develop bhakti right association very very important especially the association of holy people holiness is nothing but 100% purity is called holiness when this is there in life that mind becomes extremely powerful and it will impact all other minds very positively it will transform other minds you will see this in the lives of all sages and saints so this power comes from holy people and that is why it is important to go into their proximity and serve them listen to them and get knowledge from them that is the importance this is how bhakti is to be developed we will continue further om shanti shanti shanti